Hi, how's it? We're in the next part, so please go gauge your bearings to figure out what in the world we were talking about, uh, to figure out what, what's going on here, okay? Uh, in the previous part, I was speaking about uh, these writing softwares, these um, script spewing out softwares at the prompt um, of a command that you enter in from your keyboard, like Writer, Chat, GPT, and Jasper. And I was speaking about how it is that they have the ten amount of ill-gotten gain. Do you understand? And how people should be careful how to use them. I was I highlighted how it is that yes, we are in this world. We're not of it, however. Uh, and because we're in this world, we also have to be innocent as doves, though shrewd as snakes. So we can't entirely ignore the AI revolution, and we can't also entirely not benefit from it or capitalize on it. But we need to look at artificial intelligence as Christians, the way that, for instance, when Google was on the fo was on the scene initially when it came on board, Google was not a replacement for our minds. Google was just this age crank cat, like, please move. Google did not replace our brains. It just made our research easier. It, you know, simplified. It, it, it took, it made it such that we had, we took less time to find what it is that we needed in order to bring together what we needed to piece together. Uh, it, it made our deadlines towards our essays less daunting. Yes, that's what Google did. It also broadened our understanding, broadened our sources of information. And so those who love to learn would then be in a position to learn a lot more. Hence that's why Grand Shop currently the, the the kids of this generation, the Gen Z and e, and the ones after them, that's why they have so much more information um, in their understanding than we did when we were coming up and so on and so forth. As we go back into the baby baby uh, boomers, it's because they're growing in an information age, and that is something that has also been prophesied in God's word in the Book of Daniel. He said that in the last days knowledge will increase, and kids these days know so much more than we did because we had access to just a prescribed set of books that were in our books in our uh, bags for school and that's all we had whereas kids now have got this like you know internet you know worth of wealth of information and if they are hungry for understanding they can be super knowledgeable super young in a way that we just never had the opportunity so there are benefits to all of these things remember this is still god's earth uh, albeit the god of this world being satan and him running amok like a bandit we nonetheless belong to god and this earth is his and the glories and mercies on it are ours to capitalize on and feel blessed by do you understand so innovation of human beings is god given the scriptures it is written there in that god uh he the glory of god is to conceal a matter but the glory of man is to search it out so innovation is our glory do you understand we search out what god has concealed so therefore when we find things out it is because god has given it to us to discover he has given it to us as a glory so artificial intelligence is a discovery it is an innovation meaning that any since we are still not in hell we are still on earth we are yet to be eternally in a dark space that has no glory of god in it at all it means that every human innovation, there is a positive to it still. Until such time that we get to, of course, the end of the ages where the mark of the beast is just the be all and end all of a satanic innovation and God said, don't take it. He warned us against it. Every other innovation, if at all, God has not expressly warned us against it and said, don't do it. Um, we can find good in it because we are in an earth that still has the glory of God all over. Remember, rain falls on both the wicked and the righteous. Therefore, it is... Um, irresponsible of the righteous to avoid ai and allow themselves to be made archaic frankly uh in a world that is ever progressing and the industrial revolutions are still uh, you know evolving and here it is that we still want to maintain a 20s mindset we're just going to get left behind we have to catch up with the times but we also have to be godly and biblical about it so i am here to try and help people use within the christian faith who want to stay faithful to god this innovation that is largely nefarious in a godly way by being shrewd as a snake though innocent as a dove we maintain our godliness in it all do you understand we maintain our godliness in the midst of it all uh however also highlighting the perils that could be faced by many if they are not discerning and avoiding the nefariousness of it too cool uh beans i don't know the bible is still here in front of me so i feel as if i'm reading notes but i'm actually just speaking out of my mind here uh, from the top of my mind which is also another thing where i was given this mind by god why in the world are we trying to stop using it and it's funny the guys who innovated ai are the big fat chunky brains behind this lazy fying technology do you understand they worked like dogs using the big brains that god gave them to make society lazy it's just so counterproductive I, I don't even understand it it's like you're smart and you innovated something that's going to make people more dumb 
No, we need to try and magnify the glory of God in humanity, not decrease it. And AI is a massive threat threat to that. And ultimately, it's going to culminate, culminate to a point where God is going to have to take his church out of the way and allow AI to take you over. AI is largely likely what under heaven is going to be that thing in the, in the brain or in the right hand, the mark of the beast. It's probably going to be, you know, spearheaded by AI. It's likely going to have a back end of it being in artificial intelligence. But until such time that we get to that dreadful time in the history of the human race, we've got to use AI to help ourselves live lives here that are convenient, but not lazy. All right. But also train people how to not be ungodly in the midst of a society or an era that's making people lazy. Okay. Very well. Guys, you know what? There are revivals breaking out in the US. I've come across that information online in universities. Like, kids might be the ones targeted by this insane agenda, but they are they are getting reached for Jesus. Meaning, it's not yet over. Like, there's hope. There's hope. So these very people that are being given so much more information and they have got access at their fingertips to being lazy and still millionaires, they are still choosing Jesus. They're choosing not to go with the grain of darkness. So we, we got to have hope because they got hope. You know, the Lord is a lover of our souls, guys. He knows how to counteract every um, era's cultural fails. He knows how to counteract them. And I'm out here trying to encourage people to be on that board. Sorry, on that boat. To be on board with that particular agenda. With that particular rhetoric. I apologize. We are struggling with resources. Yeah, anyway. So I was speaking about Jasper, uh, Chat GPT, G GPT, and Writer. Now, these softwares, ne? Apparently, Jasper is basically a human being. Yeah. I have not checked out Jasper and I don't intend to because I still like to use my brain. I also have not taken up the advice to go on Writer because it is apparently better than ChatGPT uh, because I was shocked with goosebumps out of my mind with what ChatGPT can produce. So if Writer has got better ability to spew out information or a whole script for you than ChatGPT and I found ChatGPT to be frankly violently excellent, I don't want to see what's, what, 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 I don't want to see what Writer can do. I also don't want to see what Jasper, I don't want to see what an artificially intelligent human being looks like. I don't want to see what the infusion of AI into human beings looks like. I'm not trying to get there. Like a, a chat GPT on its own was a hair raiser. So I love fitness and I love nutrition. Um, it's a, a subject of interest for me that comes close to the gospel. My primary, per, my primary passion is the gospel. That's what, that's the main thing that I love to talk about. Uh, I've shortly after that, well, actually quite a, there's quite a big gap. I, it's not, it doesn't come close to the gospel. It is still far off, but it is the next best thing for me, fitness and nutrition. And this has been true of me since I was in school. That's why I used to love the subject that was biology. Uh, I passed it the best out of all my subjects in school. I don't know why I didn't choose a career in that field. I probably would have been very happy if I did so, but you know, money is what apparently makes this world go round. So I chose a career and I chose a university degree that apparently would make me the most money, not so much that would fulfill my passions. I was scared of blood. That's why I couldn't have never ever done anything within the fields of anatomy, like being a doctor or a psychiatrist or whatever, but I definitely uh, loved anything at all that benefits the human body. Um, but that also does not have to do with, you know, dealing with the dying human body. So medicine was out of the question, but things like biochemistry I could have done. But as shallowness, I did not want to have to wear a white overall because I wanted to wear a Gucci dress. Yes, believe it or not, that those were that's how I made decisions in the past. It just goes to show how God can transform a brain. If it all I had gotten saved as a kid, I probably would have just flat out studied biochemistry or nutrition, something in the health sciences as um, a university student. But, you know, I, I chose the commercial sciences because it apparently made us more money. Very well. Cool beans and bananas. So since I've always loved nutrition, anything that has to do with health, the body, how this mineral affects this organ, since that's always just been my, 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 my just fascination all right uh in this era of sorrow that i find myself in i was like you know what i had this passion and i started working out some time ago even though i've been kind of lazy these days not lazy i've been inundated with 
I have been inundated with fretfulness and so it's made me stop working out. I actually have a true desire and interest to carry on. Anyway, whatever. Cool. So since this is my passion, I figured. Since it is, it comes close to the gospel. If at all, I'm not going to feel like I'm working. You know, they say do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. If I'm not going to feel like I'm working and if I have to come up with a strategy to make money online, that's not going to get me censored because the world global elites are crazy and they're making sure that everybody says one thing. If I'm going to make money in a secular space, where am I going to make money? And I realized that it's where the passion is at because then I'm going to have the energy to do it. I'm going to have the motivation to do it because I love it. So I figured that, okay, so I never got to study nutrition and whatnot um, further beyond biology at school, but I've always had an interest in it. I've always loved to know how the body operates, how it works, how food interacts with the body and fitness and all that jazz. So I can start fitness blogging and I can also start nutrition blogging. Uh, since these days, you don't have to have a qualification to just give your opinion on stuff. You just need to give a disclaimer that I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a dietitian. I'm just a girl that loves food, right? Insofar as you can do that, people will come to you. They'll flood to you. There are many people that don't have official qualifications that are doing really well on social media. So that for me was my strategy. Get fit in front of people and eat right in front of people and then share uh, how this food is interacting with the inside of you. Uh, but you see, because I have not studied um, the an anatomical reaction to food since high school, I need information. If at all I'm going to write a compelling piece, a convincing article on why you should incorporate chia seeds into your diet, I need to find out, um, you know, from sources that I would find online. So I used ChatGPT to do that, uh, to get the nutritional information that can help me build a bodied argument in favor of apricots, in favor of raspberries, in favor of strawberries, in favor of cabbage or whatever, right? And why this is beneficial for your health in terms of fitness as well, how it's going to benefit your strength training and all that jazz. Okay. I could not just come up with this stuff from the top of my brain. I had to study it from experts and then paraphrase it in my own content. And I had this idea for a minute already. I have been checking out content for a while. I'm just naturally very drawn to it. That is fitness related, um, health, nutrition related, all that jazz. I'm, I'm always just checking it out. Things for skin, hair, anything about the human anatomy and how food interacts with it. I'm feeling it. Okay. That's been my passion for a minute since I was a kid. Okay. But I didn't study it in an official capacity at a university, but I have gained much knowledge on the subject from experts all over the world because of my interest in it. So I figured that instead of just being an, a student of all of these experts, how about I make out of myself a teacher? I need to create a career. And the best thing that you can do for yourself once you have been kicked out of corporate South Africa or corporate wherever you are at is to live a career, thrive or establish a career out of your passions out of what you naturally adore, then in that way you're not going to feel lethargic and already dead, the drool um, at the bedside of this job that you are forcing yourself to do just to make money. I realize that that's the only way that I'm going to be happy in life. So I want to convert out of myself a health and a fitness blogger because it's what I love next to Jesus. <laughs> but I do not know, okay, how to put this information together in a convincing, compelling way in my own capacity. All right. So I needed to get advice outside, basically research. My goodness, guys, what ChatGPT done did. <laughs> Next part.